Hi, welcome to Math 1300. This is College Algebra through Nunez. Uh, today's section that we're going to be doing is 1.8. It is absolute values. So I guess we need to start out by talking about what is an absolute value. An absolute value is best described on a number line. An absolute value means the distance a number is from zero on a number line. So if I talk about the number three, the number three is three units from zero on a number line. So the absolute value of three is three. But if I look at negative three, negative three is also three units from zero. So a lot of students have always told me, oh, it makes it opposite. It makes it out. No, it doesn't necessarily make it opposite. What it does is it creates, it's a distance and a distance is never, ever negative. So an absolute value sign is, looks like a big number 11 that we put around something. So this would read the absolute value of seven. So again, seven on a number line would be seven units from zero. So the absolute value of seven would be seven. Now, the absolute value of negative 7, just like we showed here with the threes, negative 7 would also be 7 units away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 7 would also be 7. So again, absolute value is the distance from 0 on a number line. The distance from 0 on a number line. And in example number 1, they want us to write the expression without using absolute values. So they want us to write what it's equal to. They want us to write what it's equal to. So it says write the expression without using absolute values. So we have the absolute value of four. We have the absolute value of negative three. And then we have the negative on the outside, absolute value of negative two. That's gonna be one that we have to look at. So the absolute value of four is four units away from zero on a number line, so it's four. The absolute value of negative three is three units away from zero on a number line, so it's three. This is read the negative of, of meaning multiply. So the negative of the absolute value of negative two. I know that the absolute value of negative two is two, but the negative of that would be negative two. So the only time an absolute value can have a, a um, can have a value of negative is if the negative is on the outside. That means negative one times that. Okay. Example number two. We have again. It's going to be the same thing over and over. But we're going to always um, add to it. So they want me to find the absolute value of x plus three equals seven. The absolute value of x plus three equals seven. So since we're now looking for a variable, it's not only equal to seven, because seven is seven units from zero on a number line, right? Zero, seven, that's seven units right there. But what is also seven units is negative seven. This negative seven is also seven units. So when trying to solve for a variable, we're going to drop the absolute values and write it exactly like you see, x plus three equals seven, because that would be one of my answers when we solve for x. However, when we drop the absolute values, it's also equal to the negative of that. So we drop the absolute values, we write it exactly like it says, and we drop the absolute value and we write it as the negative of what we see. Then we solve for both of them and that'll be the values we can have for x. So here I'm gonna what? Subtract three from both sides, I get x equals four. And I'm gonna subtract three from both sides, x equals negative 10. And if we look at it, go we'll put it back in, four plus three is seven, the absolute value of seven is seven or negative 10 plus three is negative seven, the absolute value of negative seven is also seven. So again, we come up with two answers.
Example number three. We're gonna keep on going just like we've been doing in all the other sections. It's the same exact way that we work it. It's just adding to it. It's adding to it. Each one of these things, we're adding a little bit to it. So I got the absolute value of three X minus five plus three equals 10. Plus three equals 10. Well, for this thing here, I said we drop the absolute value symbols and write it as what we see and the opposite, but the first thing we have to do is isolate the absolute value. This says plus three, so I gotta get that three to the other side so we can isolate it. So I got absolute value of three X minus five equals, if I subtract three, I got what? Seven. Now, once I'm isolated, now we do exactly what we did in the last problem. We drop the absolute values, write it exactly like we see it, and we drop the absolute values, and we write it as the opposite of what we saw it. Now we solve, add five, three X equals 12, X equals four, that's one of our answers. And we um, add, so we get what, three X equals negative two, and we divide by three and X equals negative two thirds. That would be our two answers for those absolute values. Not only do we have an absolute value of an equal, an equation, but we can also have absolute values of inequalities. Inequalities, the greater than, the less than, the greater than or equal to. So if it's an absolute value inequality, it works very similar, except we're gonna change the inequality. So if I have the absolute value of X minus two is less than seven, less than seven, we're gonna drop the absolute values and write it exactly like we see. X minus two is less than seven. And we're gonna drop the absolute values and write it as the negative. However, when we do the negative, we flip the inequality sign. So it's gonna say X minus two is greater than negative seven, is greater than negative seven. So this is how we're gonna work it. But, but, instead of writing two equations like this, or two inequalities like this, I would prefer to write it all as one. So I'm gonna come back over here and let me erase this for one second. I'll put this as what? X minus two was greater than negative seven, okay? I'm gonna rewrite it here and say the absolute value of X minus two is less than seven. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put the negative seven on this side and rewrite it again. It'd be negative seven is less than the absolute value of X minus two, which is less than seven. So I'm gonna put the negative seven on the left because it is to the left on the number line and I'm gonna rewrite it exactly like I see it. Now I just drop the absolute values and it reads negative seven is less than X minus two, which is less than seven. And now I can do what we did when we did the absolute value problems and I'm just going to let X be by itself. So get the two away by what? Adding two but I'm gonna add two to all of the sides. So I'm gonna add two here, and I'm gonna add two here. Negative seven plus two is negative five, is less than X, because we now got rid of the twos, which is less than nine. And by doing it this way, we already have it in interval notation, which is what they're gonna ask us to do after we graph it. So this is gonna be what? Negative five to nine, it's greater than negative five, so it's a parenthesis. It's less than nine, so it's a parenthesis. This would be the interval. And if we want to graph it, it's already done for us. I have negative five, positive nine. It's a parenthesis facing to the left, and it's a parenthesis facing to the right. And then we would shade what's inside. We would shade what's inside. Doing it this way, I don't have as much trouble because of the way that I'm showing my two endpoints. I'm showing where I'm going with my two endpoints. Doing it this way, I got two separate ones, 
and I'm gonna have the X and I'm gonna have to rearrange things. Either way is fine, just make sure that you know that this already is in the interval and we can graph it from this method easier. All right, from here we have our last example, which is going to be the absolute value of 2x plus 3, the absolute value of 2x plus 3 over 2 is, oh, plus 7 is greater than or equal to 12. We have a lot going on here. We have a lot going on here. But undo one thing at a time and we should be fine. First thing, isolate the absolute value by getting the 7 to the other side. So subtract 7 from both sides. And I have the absolute value of 2x plus 3 over 2 is greater than or equal to 5. 12 minus 7, 5. My absolute value is isolated. So like the last one, it's 5 units away from 0. So it's greater than or equal to 5. Or we can put negative 5 is greater than or equal to. It stays the same. The same inequality sign. The same inequality sign. Now it's isolated, so we drop the absolute value. I got negative 5 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 3 over 2, which is greater than or equal to 5. Now the first thing I want to do here is get rid of the 2 at the bottom. So I multiply by a 2 so that I can cancel a 2. But I multiply by a 2 and I multiply by a 2. So this gives me negative 10 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 3, which is greater than or equal to 10. And now what? Add, or in this case, subtract 3 from both sides. All sides, I should say. Canceling it out. Negative 13 is greater than or equal to 2x, which is greater than or equal to 7. And then lastly, we're going to divide by 2 for every term. Canceling that out, I got what? Negative 13 halves is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to 7 halves. It's kind of already in. This is the inequality, but we can rewrite this in interval notation very well, or very easily. Interval. We'll have what? Negative 13 halves, because that's our number. And we got what? 7 halves, that's our other end. It says less than or equal to, so that's going to be a bracket. Greater than or equal to, that'll be a bracket. And if we graph this, it's already kind of done for us. Negative 13 over 2, positive 7 over 2. The bracket goes to the right, and the 